my belief that Gandhi's views... Hey, Composite Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat and my tie got cut off because I went to a restaurant where they cut your tie off if you wear a tie in the restaurant. So that was a fun surprise. I kind of knew about it, so I was prepared to sacrifice my gorgeous tie. So what is the deal today? Well, it is a more advanced critical listening exercise. So you have diligently been doing your listening. You have been sticking samples in and picking out frequencies and listening to them. And in, I believe it was the last video, in one of the videos before this video, I cover, oh no, I think it's actually two, three videos away from here. I think, I believe it's the third one from here. We, I talked about how transients are, because our ear is mechanical by nature, was it the previous? I don't remember, one of the videos before this one. Uh, because our ear is mechanical by nature, when things that are super transient get louder, they simply change character, they do not alter uh, the actual loud perceived loudness. Our ears average things out a little bit because they can't respond that fast. That fast. So, what uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to reset everything, and we are going to just generate our next listening exercise to accompany the 15 minutes. So I'm not asking you to do more listening. I'm just asking you to take that listening now that you've been doing that to do maybe the the noise listening for a little bit, sample listening for a little bit, and now there's going to be a new aspect you're listening for that'll become mega important. If you do this every day, you'll be very ready when we come to dynamic processing later on. So first, just get some drum sounds, some hi-hats, you know, whatever it is. So these are, these are fine. And honestly, you should do this with all sorts of samples. But first, we're going to start off with drums. So I'm going to go with a closed because it's very, very transient. Now, you'll notice if we zoom in on this thing here that it doesn't peak all the way. So if you have a handy normalize function which simply brings the audio all the way up, go ahead and use it. Now, it's not showing me that it's peaking, but because it barely moves when I normalize it, that means that it's peaking. Somewhere along there, it is barely peaking. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to put this ev on every beat. So we're going to do every single beat here. And all you're going to do, this is the exercise. I want you to play it. So first you play it. You, you listen to it. And you just become familiar with that sound. You listen to its attack, the very, very beginning. You listen to the stuff happening after the attack. You listen, you identify what kind of frequency spectrums in here. What patterns do I notice? Like here sounds quite a bit like noise. It's got high end on the noise, more a lot more than low end because it's a high hat. And so it sounds more similar to white noise than it does to pink noise. And you know, you start making observations, conscious ones. You need to do this. You need to specifically consciously think of this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start messing with this volume knob. You're going to play it and we're going to turn our volume knob up and down. And when we do this, we're listening for the attack. We want to listen. How does that initial hit change? Does the volume change? Do I perceive a volume change? And then you listen to the body of it, so the rest of it, and you say, how does that affect it? And as you do this with different samples, you'll notice some pretty substantial differences and differences in ways they behave. This becomes super important if you want to be able to compress and really hear what your compressor is doing. So uh, so we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to set it here. I'm going to set it to its default value. Just alt-click to do that. And so I'm going to play it. And as I move, I'm going to move this up and down. I'm going to be making these conscious realizations. First, I'm going to focus in on the attack. And then I'll listen to the rest more consciously. So we're being really deliberate about uh, something that's usually a pretty small nuance. But in a mix, you'd be surprised. This stuff gets buried. And you, your goal is to sort of unbury it to bring back these details. So... Here, let's just listen to it for a little bit. So listen to that attack, the initial hit. See right there? It doesn't change very much, the character of it. When it gets a little louder, we get a little more, the character of it changes more drastically. That's because the noise following it is brought up. Not because that very, very initial hit changes. As you turn it down, you hear it. Now it gets a little more washy. You lose a lot of the original snap. So it's just some interesting observations. And then listen to that. Look at how far we could turn it down. 
listen to the character changes that go on. So I'm going to let you do that. You might want to consider I'm holding down control to get a more smooth action while I'm doing this. So I'll, I'll, so that's what you do. It's pretty much all you got to do. If you do this, though, you're going to start building up this mental library that you can then call upon later. So let's pick a different sample. Let's choose that one. Oh, that one's got a bit. It sounded stereo. That sounds like it's in this ear. It should be mono, though. Try panning. That sounds more even. No, it doesn't. Nope. That's strange. Yeah, you start noticing things about your samples too. Anyways, so now we'll do it with this one. So you listen to that very initial attack. And you notice it doesn't change. It, it, the loudness there changes very little. Even though we're bringing down the volume. Listen to that. Listen to how the attack interacts with the body right around here. It's very different. And so these are things that, that uh, as an audio engineer, you're just never going to be able to explain to musicians half the time or listen, especially listeners. Musicians, if they have some studio experience and they know what they're listening for, they might be able to, to catch you. you. You're probably going to end up talking about like, do you hear the sound, the snap, da 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 But chances are they're not they don't know exactly what you're listening for they just haven't done the work so they're not going to know but they'll understand that there is a difference like they'll hear it not the same way you do though so that's sort of the benefit of doing this is you really deliberately know what you're going like you specifically know what things do under certain circumstances and when we start altering gain with eqs and dynamic plugins and we start throwing in delays things are going to happen that cause all sorts of weirdness and understanding having an intuitive grasp like this will will really help let's grab a different sample let's um you can do this with drum loops. We're going to keep it pretty simple right now and just do like, we'll do a kick instead, right? Drop a kick in here. And now it sounds panned the wrong way. So now as we play it, oh, oh, one thing, if you do this over monitors, you got to be aware of your acoustic environment. So headphones may be, if you, first off, if you don't have a good pair of headphones, go buy one. You can get a good set for like 60 bucks. I mean, yeah, obviously if you... Generally, 120 bucks is what you're probably looking at, but you can find them on sale. You go in there. Just if you have the chance, give them a listen, see what they sound like, ask some people there. Now, don't ask. Okay. When I say ask people there, I mean people who you respect and know that they do know what they're doing. If you ask a random sales rep, they're going to do it because that's their job. They're, that doesn't mean they're any good at mixing. So you're going to want to find someone who's good at mixing and get some advice from them. They'll probably throw out a couple brands that they that they might not like, oh, whatever. Like the ones I'm listening to are uh, Foz, Foz Tex. By the way, I'm wearing a hat. Don't know if I told you that. It was important that you know that. So Foz Tex, that's the one. I, I like them. They work great for me. They're fine. Uh, I have a pair of Beats just because that's when I was new. That's what I wound up buying, and I listen on other people's headphones all the time. Honestly, I would I need to buy another set that is much more because I can't I can't work with the Beats anymore. Like they just reasons. So <laughs> you guys will know. There's they get a lot of hate, but I don't like the way people hate on them. I feel like people are oh bass response la la la, but then they like don't ever listen to them. Like, if you know what the beats sound like, I like them for certain reasons. I just, for the mixing side of things, I'm kind of careful. So, anyways, so we're going to listen to this. Now, this one has very, very different frequency content. So, we need to be aware of that. It sounded like it just changed right there, too. Okay, so what we're going to do... Oh, it's when I talk that it sounds like it changes. That's, uh, that's an interesting thing. It's probably from masking... Uh, from frequencies in my voice messing with the way my brain is perceiving the overtones so we'll talk about masking and stuff later but you're going to do the same thing you're just going to listen observe now this one you notice the attack sounds very very different so as we move the volume around the it's not quite white noise but it sounds like white noise it's actually closer to distortion in my opinion so as we bring stuff down and up That snap stays there quite a while while this lower end uh, just, dis just, just disappears right away. This is very important when you're trying to pick out a kick. 
because you want to know, you know, if they're going to be listening loud, how loud do they have to turn it up for them to get the full brute of whatever your kick is doing? So you do this, you do this, you're going to notice so many things, like just tons of things. So I recommend this, do it with drum loops, do it with individual drums, start, do it with all sorts of different hi-hats, don't settle for one sample, like really take the time to build this up. Plus it's just interesting, you're going to gain so much. I want you to do this without analyzers. Okay, so no analyzers at the beginning, just your ears. After you've got your ears, you can start busting out oscilloscopes and gain and maybe bring up uh, the limiter or whatever, watch it go through here and just observe things like that. I really recommend using spectrograms and frequency analyzers. Like I have one signal analyzer right here. This is fine. I would turn it on to the spectrum view, observe that see what happens to it. Now you got to remember that this, that this is because of your ear that it sounds different. And so the mids will actually be brought out and the highs and lows will disappear because of the way your ear works. Now you should be able to process more or less what that means from previous videos. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's the exercise. If you do this exercise, you will just be stepping your game up another like 20 levels because Honestly, most people who are like, oh yeah, music, I'm into the mixing scene, bro, and stuff like that, but they don't know jack. Like They don't listen. They don't practice their craft. They got into it because they thought it was cool or they thought they had a passion in it. But if you're really passionate, you're going to take the time to do this because it's interesting. It's This stuff is going to make it so that you can sit down and be like, these are my frequency problems, EQ, bang, fixed, moving on. Bro, they're going to be sitting there going, oh, wh where's my problem? And then it's like, oh, you might be saying, but they're taking more time. Yeah, they're taking more time because they don't know what they're doing. It, like you could take more time too. You have the option to take more time and use your time more effectively. They're going to be sitting there and, they're, and then they're probably going to settle not for what they think sounds good, but either for, they're going to settle because they don't know what they're doing and they think, oh, this sounds all right. And, or they're going to do something that they've been told is a good idea. Like, oh, I'm going to cut here because most people say there's mud right here. Like I'll toss out tips like that too, but that's because I know what it sounds like. Like I really honestly think that and I know why I think that. And you got to know when you should cut there and when you shouldn't. So this is like just being deliberate about it. So yeah, anyway, so we'll do that. Let's pull out a drum loop and give a listen to a drum loop in the way that sounds. So I have a whole bunch of loops uh, in here. We'll do a, a high loop, a top loop. So take that. You're going to want to do this with wave files as well. I'm not going to pull out how bad mp3s sound for a while just so you know they sound friggin awful so like you you don't even once you hear how it sounds bad you all you i won't need to convince you anymore like it's it's pretty obvious there are other videos out there that explain it i'm gonna have my own it'll come out eventually it's on my list but it's just that's not like your number one concern right now but just so you know when you're critically listening like this please make sure you have wave files and make sure they're wave files that haven't that are no longer wave files like we're, we're mp3s and someone converted them back to a wave that does not count that's not a wave file it still sounds just as bad so and it's pretty obvious if you know any digital theory because you can't restore missing information you just can't do it so you just blow your file up and make it bigger than it was necessary so yeah yeah anyways moving on so we're gonna listen to this and just do the same thing so i'm gonna listen for my transients observe how those behave and how the peaks sound when I turn the volume down and how they sound when I bring them up, how the body interacts, what kind of samples, what are the frequencies, those kinds of things. Then I could break out my TDR Nova or whatever filtering plugin you want to use and begin filtering out the low and highs and selectively isolating frequencies and consciously making connections with those frequencies. As you do this stuff, you just get, you just gain your ears. So listen to how our mitt that you can hear this guy just because of the frequencies in him, you hear him just disappear right away and we'll notice that he is a lot smoother. So he disappears really fast while our, our, uh, our hats and stuff, they stay right where they're at. So this is a really great example of it. So listen, as we, as we turn it down, he disappears. That, that guy that's a lot more smooth because he, he matches our ear. Our ears can actually tell us what he actually sounds like. While these hats, you know, they're too fast. So our ears, they change in character, but not volume quite as quickly. See that how much higher the hats are now as opposed to the 
to that clap sounding thing. And then when you turn it up, the opposite happens. You hear that clap sort of get louder. If you call that a clap, it's like a whooshy clap. And the hats, they, they just kind of change character. Now you'll see, all, now the reason I don't want you using scopes right away is because your scopes, th the point is, is this is something that occurs to you because of your ear again. So your scopes are going to give you information and I don't want you looking at this information and saying, look, it sounds different because my scope says it sounds different. But it, your scope just says different stuff's happening doesn't mean you perceive it any differently. So you want to be careful about how you introduce scopes into your mess. In fact, I might even recommend not using scopes for a good chunk of time like not for an exercise like this other exercises scopes are totally fine totally fine they're very useful but for this kind of stuff no siree they're not as useful so again this will come this will come in handy big time later so if you have any questions about this let me know let me know what you kind of do as a listening exercise what you use so for this it's pretty simple all you need is a volume knob which i assume you have if you have a daw and uh, a uh, some samples which you should also have I have free sample videos go look at my free sample uh, I have a playlist for websites to give out free samples if you are seriously missing samples now those might those you might end up with waves or not now these uh, another thing about this is these have been processed quite heavily and so depending on the processing they may have been brought down they've been they've once you process it all depends on plugins some plugins will bring your stuff down bring it up they'll oversample they're not oversample there's just all loads of madness that can happen so it's just an interesting deal because people make it sound so simple. Like I kind of made it sound simple. Like this is the wave file is MP3, MP3 sound bad, wave file sound good. Like that's the conclusion, right? But then when you consider processing and all this whole mess and all the different stages could, this could go through, it's really not that simple. Like it just isn't. So you could have a wave file that was always a wave file and might sound just as bad as an MP3. But that's where like the expertise comes in on how you manipulate your stuff and what plugins you do use versus what plugins you don't use. So it's just an interesting deal. Honestly, it, the reason most people don't talk about it though is because it's not that big a deal. It's just, if you really want to get technical, there, is, there are differences in why things sound certain ways. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions again, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. So here's what I got. I chose a pulse wave. Now this stuff is outrageously simple sound design, like stupidly simple. So with chiptune, it is all about the compositional side of things pretty much. It is not necessarily how crazy you can get your sound.